uh, all the questions will be MCQ type. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, it will be similar to the question that you had during your yes. Sir, uh, I'm, uh, I'm having another question also, sir, that. Uh, and there is no negative marking. No negative. No negative. Okay. Sir, uh, whether the question will be repeated, like um, from assignment, uh, whether any question will be asked in the exam? It's possible. You don't know exactly much, but it is possible that some questions would be. On which basis you you put mark for the assignment? On the basis of the answer that you give. Sir, on the basis means it's empty to type. Sir, uh, but I have received mail that uh, many students uh, reporting that uh, they are not uh, getting full mark for the assignment repeatedly. So that what is that? That was there was two or three problems because because it's a machine marking. So there were some technical issues and some. So that all those will be taken care of. And even right now, if you see your so today you must have received the uh, answer key for the final two uh, assignments, 21 and 22. Uh, but even after that, if you see your final score, it will still be less than if those those people who we said that they will get the extra mark because of whatever issues that was there. But right now, it will not be visible or there. But when we when you get your final certificate and the final mark, because we'll have to look into each one of your answers and sort of do something manually. So that will be done eventually before you get your certificate. So please do not panic. Uh, if you do not see that correction right now, but it will eventually be done. We are sure that. Sir, uh, we have uh, written note uh, that is 22 assignment we have submitted, sir. Uh, for the exam, uh, how many assignment you will consider for the module? All. So uh, it is uh, so for your final score. Uh, whatever total marks that you get from your assignment, 40% uh, weightage will be given for that. And then whatever marks you get for your from your final exam, 60% marks will be taken from that. So this will make, make your final score. I just want to know whether the videos alone is enough or they want to refer to the internet or any other books. Uh, if you can uh, go to the video, listen to the lecture, and go to the handouts and the assignments that are there already, that is good enough for the exam. Okay. Sir, so, uh, they just want to know whether the certificate will represent like we have completed any degree or diploma. Sorry, I couldn't understand you. Could you repeat So they just want to know whether the certificate will be uh, based on your marks or uh, will it be given that they have completed a degree on something? Uh, so, a couple of things. Number one, the certificate will be given to only those who have who have registered and appeared for the examination. That's number one. Now, for the, all those who appear for the examination, the certificate, as you may have seen in the announcement, 
there are four kinds of certificates depending on how much marks you get. So if you have overall, finally you get 90% or above, you get the elite plus gold medal certificate. If it's between 80 to 90, you get the elite certificate. If it is uh, uh, 70 to 8 or sorry, it's, uh, 70 to 90, you get the elite. If 50 to 70, you get uh, completed certificate. And if you get below 50%, you get a certificate of participation. But this is only for those who appear for the exam. So there are I don't know amongst you, but there are a lot of people who have who are going to the course, but they have not registered for the exam. They will not, even though they may have completed all assignments and whatever, but they will not be getting any certificate. Yeah. After appearing for the exam, how many days people wait for the exam? How many days? Yes, sir.
Whether the common things were which they discuss in today's in the year, how will we calculate the percentage of the answer? Can you please repeat your voice is breaking? How will we calculate the percentage of the answer? Not a percentage. One moment. One moment, sir. Uh, RGCT. RGCT, please. I, th I think you are using a lot of uh, microphones or something over there. Use only the laptop's microphone. There's something interfering in between. A laptop will not have so many voices. I think if you are using any additional microphones, please cut it off. Use only laptop's microphone. Yeah, go ahead. I'm facing a kill. Whatever you want to ask, please ask. Sir, uh, that, uh, uh, in India, uh, how can we calculate the percentage of disease attacks of any disease? Total population by the, by the ordinary person and the drastic person. Who want to know how to calculate the prevalence of a disease? Uh, yes, sir. Percentage of disease uh, from the total population of India. By the uh, on a different to the. If that is the question, what is the answer? Percentage of population, percentage of people with disease out of total population is equal to what? Prevalence or incidence? Risk ratio or ratio?
See, if you wait, we'll have a numerator and a denominator. Right? So I don't want to just give an answer to you. I want to educate you. Huh? Any rate is comprises of two components. One is the numerator and the other is the denominator. What do you think will be the numerator and what do you think is the denominator? Ajisiti, was that answer audible to you? Am I audible to you? Hello? Yes. Am I answer cake is Amma? Audio cake is Amma? I will not respond to the question. Yes, sir. You are able to hear you, sir. I am able to hear you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but I am uh, waiting for an answer. <laughs> I have spoken already. I, am, I have asked you a question. So you ask the question, what is attack rate? I said, yes, it's a rate, it has a numerator and a denominator. I am now asking you, what do you think is the numerator and what do you think is the denominator? And you must walk through the lecture. Attack rate in an error, that's wrong. Measures of disease. See here, denominator less. People who are suffering from disease are going. And in numerator, they are going to already. So the number of disease, that is the numerator, and the number who can give disease. The susceptible population will be in the denominator. What is that? Uh, NIE, if you want to share a document, you can uh, share it uh, in the copy. Do you want to share the document? Yeah. No, we just wanted to, instead of a board, we just thought we would write it on a piece of paper. No, no, no. You, you can write something on the laptop, something on the laptop, and the same laptop is configured on the software. You can share it. Okay. Uh, uh, not here. Not here. Uh, you know what is incidence? Uh, what is incidence? What is incidence? Incidence. I can't see. I can't see. This time to get to attack. What is incidence? You can also chat the message. Okay, you can text the message and text the incidence. And then you can text if you want to text. Yes. You, can, you can type. Okay, you can yeah, type yeah. the and there will be six. So, what is the incident? What's the numerator and what's the denominator? Can you hear us? We are just typing. So they are, they are typing. They are typing something. You're writing or what? Sir, sir, they have, have typed it as denominator equal to total population. What's the numerator? <laughs> 
I prone to disease or those who have the disease? Prone to disease means people who can get the disease. Right? Potentially, if they are, it's possible that they can get the disease. But they may get the disease or they may not get the disease. Right? So the numerator for incidence, what is the numerator would be number of new people who get the disease. New. The key word is new. And the denominator is the total population which is prone to the disease. Right? For example, if we are thinking of uh, what kind of uh, if you want to know the incidence of measles in children then the numerator would be the total number of children in a particular time period who get measles and the denominator would be all those children who are, pro, who are prone to get or who are what is it, susceptible to getting measles. Right? It's not there, it will not be the total population because we, we are in measles only children get. Adults will not, will usually not have to get measles. Right? So that, that is incidence. Now when incidence, you are calculating incidence for Communicable disease, infectious disease, diseases where you can get epidemics and outbreaks. There, instead of the word incident, we use the word attack rate. Right? So, even say for hypertension, for example, you will have incidence of hypertension, which is incident number of new case, new case, number of new cases of hypertension divided by the total population at risk for hypertension. But there we will not use the word attack rate. But if it is measles, if it is jaundice, if it is uh, viral fever, right? um, cholera, HIV, there all those places. So in the only communicable diseases, infectious diseases, instead of incidence, we can use the word attack rate. Okay, understood? I have one question to you. Are you engineering students or you are a medical student? No, sir. We are engineering, biomedical engineering students. Okay. Applied in the, in, the, in the clinic 
are in the uh, in, uh, in population, right? So basic research or bench research involves laboratory tests, developing technology, instruments, new developing new drug molecules, identifying new drug molecules. And then when they are in a stage that the basic research or bench research has uh, come to a stage that okay now we have this product the product could be a drug the product could be a technology the product could be a test the product could be an instrument okay and then if, if it has to be used by a doctor or a laboratory technician or a microbiologist or the pharmaceutical industry it needs to be tested in human population or animal population right drug has to be tested first in animal population correct and then it comes to human being in human being it is tested the drugs are tested for its uh, safety first and then it is tested for its usefulness for a health condition so Take an example of drug. A drug is developed in bench research through testing of molecules, number one. And in it is tested, it is used in first in animals to check whether they are safe. And then subsequently, it is used in human beings to see whether it is still safe for human beings without disease and human beings with a particular disease. And finally, what we call in the course as clinical trial, it is conducted in a control is sitting in human population either in clinics or in the community to see whether the drug works or not for a particular health condition. That is how a bench research contributes for example in developing a drug for a health condition uh, this way and this is true for a technology for example if suppose the biomedical engineer you in particular the groups in particular invent a machine a small app that can replace stethoscope, a small gadget, by the look of it, it picks up heart rates, for example. You test it in the laboratory first. And then you give it to doctors or nurses to test in clinics or in uh, people who have disease. Are you there? We are seeing a frozen uh, screen. We are in time. Yeah. Have you have you listed the uh, drug example technology example from the website? That's what it is. To do some tests in Recently now, they banned 300 to 400 drugs, they banned, right? Recently now, uh, they banned. So, actually, it was, I love this, priorly, priorly people were using the drug, right? Suddenly, they banned. If it is so, as sad as they would have known it previously, right? Not uh, 
doing good for the patient or monitor through a method which is called pharmacovigilance. When you listen to Dr. Sanjay Bandi's lecture, a clinical trial is conducted in a controlled setting, right? After the clinical trial is conducted, if a drug is declared uh, effective to be used for condition, it is put into the market. Okay? And when it is in the market, when I say market, it is in use. When it is in use, we do what is called post marketing surveillance. This is called stage 4 of a clinical trial. Okay? Stage 4 of the clinical trial. In phase 4 of the clinical trial, what we do is, when the drugs are introduced into the market, we still monitor or keep the drug and the patients under surveillance for its intended effects and unintended consequences. So, whatever has happened in the recent 2-3 uh, days, what you hear in the news about banning of certain drugs, first of all, there is some evidence that these combinations of drugs has some problem that has been reported in India or evidence has come from other countries that they cannot be marketed now. Okay? New evidence has emerged from the field, from the user's point of view. So, country is conducting a huge pharmacovigilance program. Many medical colleges, many hospitals, survey practitioners are contributing information about side effects or adverse effects or new effects of drugs that the patients have consumed. Okay? And that gets uh, uh, documented in a center in Delhi by the government of India. This is called Pharmacovigilance Program of India. And if they find that there are some patterns emerging which is not reported so far, it is going to be harmful, they issue a notice that let us stop. Sometimes they decide based on facts that they get it from other countries, European countries or American countries or elsewhere. So we really do not know what is the basis for uh, this ban. There may be some policy issues. Uh, there must be some reasoning why the government has done this. But then the reason that they have, they have issued such circulars is that they are monitoring these drugs after they are put into use in some There is some evidence that is available to them. Uh, just to add a little bit to what Dr. Manikam mentioned, uh, the government also monitors uh, expenditures on health and healthcare by the people. And it is also sometimes considered that these combination drugs may be more costly than your generic single drug. So considering that at a policy level, the government tries to reduce the cost of healthcare to the people in general. So that, uh, so the cost is also one consideration when framing up this policy of which kind of drugs should be available in the market, which kind of drugs can may be controlled or their use is reduced uh, because it is used very commonly and so those are the, or some other the other issues, other aspects of, which are taken into consideration uh, when having a drug policy uh, in a particular country. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir, can you hear us? Yes. Uh, sir, they are done with the questions. Okay, sir. We will wind up, sir. All the discussions through our CCD group for the exam. Do well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Ajit NIE wishes you uh, um, uh, lots of good luck for examinations. So, study well, prepare well, and come for the exams. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, there's a delay in leaving our hands because of the internet bandwidth. <laughs>